I'd like to welcome everybody to the call. We're going to start right now with news you can use. Today, we're going to talk about the second phase of the housing correction. These things go through a number of phases. Uh, we just entered, I believe, the second phase of this uh, housing correction. Um, and let me give you three main points as to why I believe that is the case. Uh, number one, the home price correction, or in other words, the drops in home prices is spreading. Uh, there's about 150 or so main markets. The top 100 markets, as of last week, 98 of those 100 top markets have a month-over-month -month decline. Now, there are two major markets that have not seen a decline yet for whatever reason. There's some unique things we talked about in the previous episode. Uh, one of them is Miami, Florida, and it is flat or still trending upwards. Very unique. Uh, it has to do with the price of houses, the great economy, the fact that it's in a non-regulatory state, uh, the fact that, uh, as I said, housing prices are cheap there um, and people can afford, uh, they'll come out of California where houses are four times as expensive for the same house and they'll come down there and they can afford to pay cash. Uh, so interest rates are not relative. So um, and I'm not sure what the other one is, but anyway, 98 of 100. Of the top 100 housing markets in the U.S. have seen a month-over-month -month price drop. That's that's item number one, why we're in the second phase of correction. Number two, uh, the housing downturn is in the process and it will slowly spread to other industries. So, for example, uh, when houses stop getting built and, and having a worse time than sales of existing homes is new construction. So when new construction falls by the wayside, Lenders uh, who would normally write or underwrite those loans uh, for those new houses lose their jobs. Uh, the construction workers who would normally be building those houses lose their jobs. The guys that put in the infrastructure, the, the power, the lights, the, the sewage, the roads, those guys lose their jobs. And, you know, you, you look at the downstream effect, when those jobs get lost, those people don't have money to spend then they, they can't go spend it where they normally spend it. So uh, without you know, trying to give you a too detailed example, let's say, for example, somebody uh, who would normally put roads in, it was a, a construction worker, and normally he'd hit the bar, you know, Joe's bar, you know, every night after work and or, you know, on weekends to watch football. He can't do that anymore. He doesn't have the extra money to do that. So now all of a sudden Joe's bar, and the waitress in the bar are making the money or the tips that they normally make and so on and so forth. And there's this downstream tumbling effect where people aren't going to make what they've been making and even get to the point where they can no longer cover their own personal or business overhead. Uh, and so other folks go out of business. Now, you know, we hate to lay all this at the, at the foot of the housing industry, the whole economy, but as a real, uh, reality, that's exactly what happened in 2008. That was essentially the cause of the Great Recession. That's what happened in the housing downturn in 2000, 2001, 2002. We have job losses because of that kind of thing. So it is going to happen. It is happening right now uh, nationwide. So I would definitely be looking at how that housing downturn is affecting other people's jobs out there. That's, and we're, we're seeing that, right? We will see a national unemployment rate increase coming up, um, and we're already seeing the beginnings of it. And the third thing is sellers are calling time out. This is an interesting thing. Sales for August 2022 versus August 2021 are actually down over 20%. So in other words, if there was 1,000 sales in August of 2021, there's only 800 sales this year in August of 2022. Uh, obviously, the numbers are much greater than that, but you're seeing, and, and it gets worse in the construction market, the new home sales are down close to 30%, 29.8%. So when you see that happening, it's not just a combination of people not being able to buy homes. There's literally sellers who are saying, not today. I'm not going to sell my house today. I'm not going to play into this run on houses and prices going down. I'm just going to sit on my 3% interest. And that's a factor that goes through sellers' minds. They're like, I will never be able to get a 3% mortgage again. 
the vast majority, something like 80 plus percent of all mortgages that are on the market today, it's like 85% actually, are below 5%. So of the existing, and a chunk of those are in the 3% range or even lower. We got as low as I think 2.68% here a little over a year and a quarter ago, 15 months ago. So nobody wants to give those up. People are like, I'll never get that again. So I might as well stay in my house for an extra couple of years. I'm going to ride out the downturn and wait till it comes back up. And then I'm going to you know, sell at that point in time. Now, the problem with that is there is a lot less property for sale, even though the number of units available for sale are three times as much today as they were even three or four months ago, June to September of 2022. Uh, for certain areas of the country, Austin, Texas, Boise, for example, have both had a tripling of the number of units available for sale. Now, having those units for sale doesn't help uh, most first-time home buyers because they can't afford the 6.2% mortgage that we're seeing currently. And by the way, tomorrow, the 21st of September, the Fed's going to announce their newest rate increase. Uh, it's projected to be 75 basis points. We'll talk about this on Thursday night. But uh, it could be as high as 100 basis points, one full point increase. That's a big, big, big increase. Um, and that will just further exacerbate the, the downturn that we're seeing in, the, in these markets uh, out there. But as I said, having more houses on the market doesn't help the overall thing. And a lot of sellers are just saying, I'm just going to take my house off the market or not put it on the market. The thing that's going to catch those guys in the neck is normal things that happen to people, the life events that cause people to really have to sell a house, death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, having to move family issues, work issues. These kinds of things happen no matter what. And although today they're like, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to get rid of that 3.2% 30-year mortgage I've got. Tomorrow or the next day, something's going to happen. Someone gets in a car accident. Life circumstances change dramatically, and they will have to sell. And at that point, they will become a true desperate seller. They're not desperate sellers today. However, there are, as I said, three times as many properties listed and on the market today, as in some of these areas, Boise, Austin, for example, as there were in June. So in a three-month period, we tripled the number of houses for sale. So there is a significant amount of motivated sellers out there. And I can tell you from being in this business on a daily basis, having a couple of housing teams that I manage, um, the, these sellers are pretty motivated. Some of them are a little cocky and arrogant still, uh, but not nearly what there was even a month ago. Most of them are a lot more reasonable and you're not going to see any final and best offer calls out there, only the cocky and arrogant ones. Um, you know, with the exception of a handful of areas around the country, most everything that's selling today um, is selling at below asking price. The vast majority of everything that gets sold is selling for below asking price. So the, the seller, the, the buyer's last resort for lender is the FHA, the government programs, uh, specifically FHA programs, Fannie, Freddie, the Ginny, Ginny Mays, these kind of things. Um, and right now, those are offering, those types of mortgages are offering some very unique uh, opportunities out there for first time homebuyers and pushing first time homebuyers to buy. So, for example, USDA has some 0% money out there and they are encouraging rural home ownership. So, don't, for those of you uh, interested in buying and rehabbing, looking at a house that's out in the country. It's got some acreage and normally you'd say, no, I don't want to do that. I would definitely stay on that. I would look at that very carefully because the free money for the borrowers um, is going to be in that spot. Also, uh, FHA is offering a lot of zero down financing now in certain areas, uh, certain demographics, and that is a hot deal too. So even if prices are too high and interest rates are too high, when people can get in for no money down, literally no money down, or they get 0% interest rates, uh, darn near 0% interest rates on these kinds of things, free money, they're going to take the swing at the bat. And um, if you're positioned correctly with your product that you're selling, you're in those areas, first-time homebuyer, first-time homebuyer homes are in short supply 
and the builders are not building that product right now because when they get done building it, their cost is higher than they get on selling. It. So there's a big shortage, as there always is, but it's even more pronounced now in first-time homebuyer homes and then the rural homes or semi-rural, something in the suburbs, it's got a little acreage on it. These things are in high demand right now. And you're able, because of higher pass prices over the last six months, you're able to be able to sell at a much higher price. Um, in spite of the fact there's expensive money out there and the market's all messed up, there are still buyers out there who will buy at these higher prices. So the market is is in this second phase right now, and you know it eventually get into a much worse phase, uh, probably not till next year. We'll continue to see what we're seeing right now go go on. Additional price corrections, dropping the prices, um, the downturn in the housing industry affecting other industries, the economy as a whole, and then finally more and more sellers who aren't highly motivated pulling their house off the market or never putting it on the market to begin with. 